I'm just using a cocktail stick just to work it into uh, the gaps. Now, I'm going to put a different filler in there in a moment, so I'm not too fussed about uh, bringing it up because we need something a bit more structural that we can sand. You can see how easy this putty is to work with. So I'm just putting small amounts onto the cocktail stick, working it into the gap. and then wiping it off and we'll give that about half an hour um, and that should be then um, ideal for being able to paint on. So I'm just going to put coming up to that point there. You can see you can be quite precise with the um, needle nozzle actually. Um, for this type of work. It doesn't look like a small nozzle but it's uh, it's quite it's quite a good size for this job. Okay I'm happy with that so I'm going to do exactly the same here. Um, again wiping that will be a a little bit more difficult so we'll do a slightly different approach okay so we'll wipe the excess off first What I like to do is just come along with, I have um, a squared off blade that I only really use for uh, filling, as you can see. Um, and if we just scrape it along, I'll make sure there's no uh, excess uh, filler and we've got a nice sharp 90 degrees angle. So that's all nice and filled in now. Um, so I'm going to do... Um, this side and a little bit of filling on that side and then I'll come back to you. Right, we now need to look at filling this little area here uh, where the two parts haven't come together and we've actually got a gap you can see through. So I'm using um, Humbrol model filler for this. Uh, the tube's a bit tatty because what I find is if you give the, the tube a little bit of a a squeeze all over before you uh, squeeze it out it mixes the oil that separates inside um, and you're you're ready to go straight away with the filler so I've got a little bit of filler here um, and we're just going to put this on with a little pointed tool um, you could use milliput for this job as well that would work uh, it might even work a little bit quicker now I think about it because you can manipulate that with a bit of water then and shape it quite quickly um, but I'm guessing we've not got the same um, we've not got the two plastic parts aligned so we might have to do some shaping of the plastic as well as just sanding back the filler here ultimately this needs to, this curve here needs to be in line with the breakwater So I'm putting more than a need on, rather than having to go back and refill, which would be somewhat annoying. There we go. We'll let that dry, um, and that means we can now come back to this area as well. And we can now have a look at sorting out this area here glue should be dry so first thing I'm going to do is just take any excess off 
using my um, sprue cutters because they get a bit closer than the scissors do so that's just a bit less to file um, we want to get this down and level first job so I'm just going to go in with an ordinary needle file first okay that feels flat we'll do the same at the other side so I'm now using one of these small diamond tooth files um, they're quite good when you want to get into small spaces so I'm using a square one first just to take back the bulk of the material they're quite coarse so uh, they, they take stuff back really quickly and then we'll sand it with sanding sticks in a minute get in with a sanding stick and just smooth that okay we're getting there and um, you get the general idea so I'll keep working away at this uh, carefully and slowly until I get the uh, shape correct and then what we might do is just skim over it with a little bit of the uh, Vallejo putty um, and give it another sand So what I want to do now while I've got filler drying uh, waiting to be sanded down is just think about the um, internal area here. Recommend going to qnr.com where they've got deck plans um, which tells you what's in every room and then you can go and research some uh, photographs of those rooms. So and I know what I'm doing with that in terms of floor colour. I need to understand how much of what we can see through these windows we'll be able to see once we've got the outside bulkheads in place um, because the windows in here are much smaller so um, that is what we're about to find out so I'm just going to plop that in place now the reality is um, I can see through those windows and through those windows, but I can't see that much. So I don't think we need to put bulkheads in. Um, I think what we, we can possibly do is put some card in, um, shaped so that we can fill the, the hole and just paint that area in the two different colours that we need for the, the two carpets. I'm not going to worry about bulkheads. Now obviously as we get further up um, and we come up to, um, I think this is deck nine, um, yeah this is deck nine, deck eight, yeah, um, these windows are then coming right up to the, the deck um, and that'll be the case as we go on up. So what we can see becomes much more, so um, we would need to cover all of that hole off but in the first instance what I want to do um, is just get this covered and painted painted in and and maybe get the bulkheads in so uh, let's have a look at what we're going to do to do that so I think to do the lower section we actually just need to mark out how much we need 
cover that area and we'll simply cover the area which is about there um, and then we can cut that with a knife and simply just glue that in so that should be all we need to do with that one so let's cut this plastic card to size And because we don't see too much of that lower deck, I'm not so worried about what that ends up uh, looking like. So, yeah, that's wide enough. So. We just have to um, make a template, I think, of that shape to allow me to get in. I wonder if yeah, I can't I can't get in. Well, I suppose what we could do is just trim some corners off. We only need to get to this point here. Um, that's a, a a join point, which is like a solid column underneath. So we're only getting to there. So if we mark there and mark there and the same there in theory we should be able to uh, cut those off and, and fit in doesn't really need to be pretty on this uh, lower level because ultimately all we're looking for is a color to be visible go that actually covers that area you're not going to see any any lip we just have to be mindful that there's a bulkhead comes in here and we don't want to foul the location holes for that Okay, I think while we've got that in and covered and sitting where we want, we might as well just get it glued in. So we'll use some liquid poly because we know that that'll uh, wick its way underneath. Just gonna push it in a little bit further actually. Okay, that is our beauty salon stroke library floor in place. So happy that that's going to do what I need to do, which is just give me a solid floor for painting. So on this level, we need to be a little bit more tidier than we have been. So we're just going to mark out the width and I think my intention is to make a solid floor that goes up to this point here um, so that we're not fouling on anything else so let's get that cut to size first and then we can think about shaping it okay so that gives us shape that we need to cover the the floor area there so the next thing is to get that shaped so what is the best way of doing that just going to tidy up okay so my solution for getting that shape cut correctly for our um, deck that's going to go on top is to use my old friend some frisket film. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to peel it off. I've, I've cut a piece out that is exactly the same size as the plastic card that we're using for the, the floor. Um, and the plan is that we'll stick the frisket film on, then trim around it with a knife so we know we've got the correct shape. Um, and then we can peel that off, stick it on the plastic card, um, and then cut around the frisket film to get a perfect shape. So uh, that is the plan. Um, so let's just get this lot out of my way. And we'll stick this frisket film on. Go. No, it's a little short. Good thing about frisket film is you can just keep using it. You don't lose your adhesive. Cut around now. This has a chamfer on it. This piece of plastic. So I want to take the knife on the angle of the chamfer. So I've got the shortest. Uh, area not the longest area if, if that makes sense well I don't think that's perfect so I'm going to go around with a, a different knife and see if I can improve that edge a little bit so we have cut some frisket film to the shape of that and we're going to use that as a template um, and we're now going to stick it onto our plastic card and then we can in theory cut around that which isn't perfect but gives me enough of a, a shape so we can cut around our plastic card now and know that we've got the shape about right Because I've cut the frisket film exactly to the uh, width of the card, I know I've got to buck up, butt up to the edges to get that right. Want it a bit longer than that, I think. There we go. So I now have my frisket film stuck down. So my next task is actually to draw around it so it's more visible okay and then using our Tamiya scissors we can cut around that okay So let's get rid of the frisket film. Another little tip with the frisket film because it's it's slightly tacky. It's a good way of quickly removing dust and debris um, off parts. So that's nice and clean now. Okay, let's have a look. Well, that seems to be pretty much what we need at the front there. Um, it's a bit long on this edge here. Um, what we actually need is for it to terminate almost at that corner. So let's just draw a line and mark that out. So that gives us how much floor we want to put in. Um, 
So we'll use that line just to trim that off. And then just sand the edges to make sure that it's it's nicely smooth with the chamfer of the actual part because obviously the bulkhead is leaning backwards which is why we've got this chamfer then i think what we will do is have a look at the deck plan again and put some uh bulk and mark out where the bulkheads are going to go and then we will we'll, we can just paint that that'll give us a little bit of interest when we look through the windows now there's also in some of these um rooms there is there is blinds and things like that so we have to uh, maybe think about put some um, some painted tape or frisket film or something like that behind some of the windows but that is doing what we want right now so um, what we're going to do is glue that down now um, and then we're ready for painting those areas and we can come back to sorting out some of this filling. So. At the forward end of deck nine, right up in the forward superstructure, is the Commodore Club, one of my favorite rooms on board. And it's the observation room and bar. And it, completely straddles the forward end of the ship and is richly decorated. Here's a painting of the uh, Olympic of cows with the racing yachts and the room is laid out with a lower level at the forward end and these two raised areas. The smoking room, Churchill's, is on the starboard side behind the Commodore Club. And this is where passengers may smoke cigars. There's a humidor at the end there for the cigars and various brandies and the like. Cigarettes are not allowed in here only cigars and then moving out into the main body of the Commodore Club some very nice artifacts of memorabilia here builders plates and the like navigation instruments, a display of knots and as we walk round now it's early in the morning here so sunrise hasn't really happened yet so the blinds are down so that the light doesn't interfere with the navigation of the bridge but normally these blinds are all up and you can look out the windows And the largest model of the ship on board, Queen Mary, in her original as-built configuration before the extra cabins were put up on the top deck. Very nice model. And we move round towards the port side. piano here for the pianist in the evening and here we have what I think is a very nice painting again off cows showing the Aquitania and the Normandy and one of the Queen Elizabeth class battleships that were built during the First World War and served also in the Second World War. And on this side of the ship, 
the port side, mirroring the Churchills. There's a small lounge called the boardroom that can be used for weddings or other small events. So all in all, this is a very comfortable, very nice lounge that is very, very popular and very quickly fills up during cocktail hours in the evening. So here we are back in the Commodore Club and the blinds are open. Gives a completely different perspective. Great views out. And as we will see, out across the forecastle, the spare propellers, the spare anchor there, and the top of the big breakwater. On passage here from Lisbon to Barbados. So I'm going to use some tube glue for uh, this because it's uh, nice and easy to work with when you want to spread over a, a big area. Um, I think it's a little bit underused tube glue. People people throw it away, I believe. Don't get why. Make sure we've got that to the edges. And then we're just tacking along that edge there. And the beauty of this glue is it's nice and slow drying so I've got plenty of time for positioning and all of that sort of stuff. I don't use tube glue very often. Um, ships hulls and things like that it's great for. So I'm just using my fingers to position it against the edge of the plastic part, so I know that that's right. Um, I'm going to wipe away some excess. Okay, doesn't need weighting down, that'll dry really nicely. Um, I'm going to start taking out some of this filler material that we've put in. Um, I'm using a half round um, diamond tooth file for this. Um, takes out material fairly quickly. Like I said, we might be ending up taking up some of the plastic here just to make sure it's aligned. And we do have a straight line there that we want to restore. So I'm just going to get my knife and trim that down in line with that bulkhead edge. Okay. Okay, I think we now need to go to something a little bit finer. So we're going to get the uh, my various um, emery cloths and sandpapers out. Um, so I've got a little bit of, I think this is 80 grit, but don't hold me to it. Um, it's a little off cut so I don't have the grits on the back and we're just going to go in there and take that back a little bit further.
think we are getting there. That's looking quite good now. So we're going to take it down to an even smoother grit and start finishing that off and blending it in now, now that we've got it cut back. That feels nice and smooth now actually. So I think what we might do is just give that a dab of primer and see what it looks like and see if we need to do any more work on it. But that essentially should be done, I think. So whilst we've got this um, fine sanding paper out, we'll uh, put the finishing touches on this as well. Blending it all in. And then with the knife, we're just going to scrape away any lumps and bumps. We'll take that round onto the inside as well. Now, whilst I was filling these, I noticed while I wasn't recording a couple of eject raised eject pin marks on the inside surface of this bulkhead which I've just sanded out, but um, there isn't any on this side. Where these two plastic parts meet, they're just slightly misaligned. We are going to have to go over that with the Vallejo filler I think it's just not quite where I want it to be so using those shims has worked really well in this area so the next job on my agenda is some little I think they're strip lights that run along the bottom edge of the breakwater um, now to do that and space them properly um, on this side around about here we have a ladder um, and to get the ladder in the correct position we need to get the photo etch railing out for the the front here um, and just get all those spacings right add the ladder and then we can put the strip lights on from there so Let's get to grip with the two different photo etch sets and make a decision on which etch we're going to be using. So we're here on deck three in the forward A staircase and we're going to make our way along the length of the deck it's important to realise that the two public room decks are at the bottom of the ship and they're very high. And that's so this very first cabin deck and those above can immediately be balcony cabins and thus generate the extra revenue required to pay for this very expensive ship. So let's start off. So we're walking around the corridor and you see all the depictions of famous people that have sailed on the Cunard ships an interactive display here about Queen Mary II and we walk down and this change in level through this big slope is because of the two very high public room decks we'll see the reason for that in a minute but sub levels within those two decks meaning that uh, some areas have to have this slope moving down and we reach 
the port side lobby of illuminations. So let's take a look some of the artwork. And here we have illuminations. <coughs> and it's the ship's cinema, lecture hall, and also this dome is the planetarium. And the dome drops down and all the passions are seated in the red seats, which fold back and have the planetarium experience from the various projectors that are located around the room. This is a fabulous space in which to deliver lectures, as I frequently do here on board. So we move out and move further aft along deck three. Small staircase down to deck two, which is all meeting and conference rooms underneath the slope there of the illuminations along this corridor. And it's early in the morning here, so it's still dark outside, but during the day, sunlight floods into this area. Favorite place for people to watch the sea. We move up and enter the main show lounge of Queen Mary 2. It's actually in darkness, so we'll come back to that. <coughs> Walking down past many of the shops. reach the main lobby or the atrium on board <coughs> with the central passageway leading through the ship, the main archery. As we get closer to Sir Samuel, the founder of Cunard, we see that his face is made up from the individual ships of the company. some of this tremendous artwork on board <coughs> and the reflection in the atrium of the bass relief there that's up here more high-end shops around this level the entrance lobby and embarkation point there We see the champagne bar. The ship's bell, which is rung at noon. And there is the bass relief. The lower level of the atrium, and then we move forward, or aft rather, through this great thoroughfare. 
ungefähr. Each side here is the engine exhaust, <coughs> hence the little bit of noise with the fans. Sir Samuel's, the coffee bar and chocolate bar. Past the sea stairway lifts. And here's the upper level of the main dining room, Britannia. Seats 1,300. So you've got the lower level there. The big round table is the captain's table. And then on this upper level, it's tiered. And in fact, under those tiers is a hidden walkway that connects the sea stairway lobby back aft to the Queen's room so you don't have to walk through the dining room to access the Queen's room. But we're going to walk through. The lower level is laid out for our uh, breakfast this morning. <coughs> Whereas this upper level, the other tables have been laid. Various levels. Allowing guests to eat in the splendor of the central part, or if you want a more um, secluded experience, you can eat in one of the other areas. And there's access at the end there to the lobby where the escalators take you down to the galley or the kitchen. <laughs> And through the D staircase lobby. Move on to the Queen's room. Right, so we're looking at the railings, and this is the section of railing we're looking at. It has a little gap there. Um, which will allow for the ladder. Now, we've removed these little lumps here because we're going to put a photo etch ladder there. And then we've got some um, little strip lights that dash along the, the full length there on both sides. So we, the approach from the kit has been um, a length of railing, a gap, a length of railing, and then on the other side, a length of railing that joins up in the middle. Um, now, when you get the Platinum Edition, you get replacements for the plastic. Um, and what you get you, uh, is two sets of railings. So you get this piece of railing here, which terminates at the gap. And the little sag there emulates the chain that is used to close off that gap, which is accurate to the ship. Um, and then they have another length of railing that goes on the other side with a, a, a fast bend um, there, which allows you to um, form the railing shape. So that is going to be the point of your uh, breakwater there. So this railing will then um, go on. Um, and that looks really nice. Now, when we look at the gold medal models, they've approached it slightly different. So gold medals models approach is where they're replacing a kit part is they number their part to the kit part. So it makes it easy to find. So E200, E202 and M201 are the kit parts. 
that we're replacing. So in this instance, they've got the railings, but they haven't um, got any sag where the chain would be, where the gap would be. So these look less realistic than the ones um, that Pontos have done for Ravel. So in this instance, I'm going to use um, the kit part, the kit photo etch parts. But for the rest of the build, look at what they've done with the railings. Um, so if we look here, we've got um, a little marker where the life boy should be, um, the, the life ring, and then we've got separate life rings that we can attach on the inside, which we can paint up, so that'll look great. Uh, we've got the little mini davits there for the ladders, and can you see we've got the little relief of where the little boxes are for those ladders. So that makes it really easy for me uh, to scratch build the actual boxes on the other side and get the sizes right and locate them because it's all in the, the ladders, uh, in the railings I should say. So throughout the build as far as possible I'm going to use the gold medal models railings because I think they're just far nicer um, in that way. Um, they're, they're adding more detail whereas the ones presented by Ravel don't have the davits, they, they don't have those boxes or anything like that. So yeah um, I think that will raise um, the level of detail up quite a bit and make my job uh, a little easier when it comes to locating and identifying where things are. So that we don't have to use the photo etch right now and we can put it on later on in the build, I'm just using a length of masking tape and marking it up with the position uh, where the ladder will be so that we can... Um, mark that out without having to put the the railings on so we can do that next um, I think it probably makes sense to put the ladders on however so let's get the so ladders we out. are going to add the ladder um, to the breakwater even though we're not putting the top railing on should be fairly safe and not require um, any protection I would think Okay, I've put the photo etch on just to make sure I've got correct position for the ladder um, and we're now going to glue the ladder in place um, I'm using medium CA for this it's not a particularly difficult job hopefully sometimes the ones that look the easiest end up being the most difficult so we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the legs and there's two little bits that jut out right on the top and they actually just sort of sit nicely on the top of the uh, plastic part there. So I'm hoping it should be nice and easy. Okay, that's about right. So now we can position our little strip lights. So the next thing I've got to work out is what the length is of those strip lights. Um, and we can take this photo etch away. And put that in a little container for safekeeping. 